16, find the limit as x approaches infinity of that given function. Um, let me just quickly review the rules as we're letting x approach infinity. If the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator, that means the top is growing faster than the bottom, our limit is going to be infinity. If the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator, that means the bottom is growing faster, which means our number is going to keep getting smaller and smaller, so that limit will be zero. And if the degree in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator, that means they're pretty much growing at the same rate, and to get the limit, we will find the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay, and if I'm looking at this one, um, I'm going to go ahead and distribute in the numerator and distribute in the denominator, and then I will be able to compare. So I will get 6x minus 2x squared minus 15 plus 5x, and if I work that out and put it in standard form, I'll get negative 2x squared plus 11x minus 15. And then in the denominator, I'll get x cubed plus 3x minus x squared minus 3, and if I put that in standard form, I'll get x cubed minus x squared plus 3x minus 3. If I'm comparing the degree in the numerator and the degree in the denominator, the degree in the denominator is bigger, which shows me that my limit will equal 0. Okay, next one, find the limit as x approaches 2. The first thing that we would like to try to do for this one is just plug in 2 and see if I can get an answer. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I notice if I do that, I get 0 over 0, which we cannot divide by 0. That doesn't mean I don't have a limit, I just cannot do it that way. So my next plan looks like these can factor, so I'm going to factor them. 3x, 3x, I'm using the magic number trick here. Um, introduced an extra 3, so I know when I'm done I have to divide it out. 3 times negative 10, negative 30, and then I'm just going to think, what times what would give me negative 30? Negative 15 times 2, negative 10 times 3, negative 6 times 5, negative 5 times 6. And I want to pick which choice gives me negative 1 when I add the 2 together. That would be negative 6 and 5. And then from here I do have to divide the 3 out. I'm going to divide it out of the first term. So if I divide the 3 out, I'll get x minus 2 and then 3x plus 5, so that's the numerator. And then down in the denominator, that's the difference of squares, which will factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then fortunately, I notice that my x2 minus 2s will get to cancel, so I'm left with 3x plus 5 over x plus 2. And my whole goal in doing that was so that I could actually plug 2 in for my x, and now I can, so this will be 3 times 2 plus 5 over 2 plus 2, that gives me 11 over 4, so that will be my limit. Okay, problem 18. Um, let f of x equal this piecewise function. Different things are happening if x is equal to 3 and if x is not equal to 3. Which the following statements are about f are true? Okay, f has a limit at x equals 3, so I pretty much need to decide if it has a limit, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left will equal the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. And I notice that this function is what's happening as long as x doesn't equal 3. So it would be the same thing as I'm coming in from the left. It would be this function as I'm coming in from the right. It would be this function. And um, so I guess I just need to, if I could do it, I guess I could just go ahead and find it. Um, to find the limit as x approaches 3, I don't. I could not plug 3 in, so I'm actually going to factor that. So x minus minus 3, x plus 3, over x minus 3. x minus 3 is cancel, so if I plug in 3, I'll get 6. So if I'm approaching from either side, my limit will be 6. So statement 1 is true. Okay, f is continuous. There are three conditions for continuity, and I'm just going to remind you of them. Um, the first thing would be that f of 3 is defined. My second thing would be the limit as x approaches 3 exists. And the third thing would be that f of 3 is equal to the limit as x approaches 3. Okay, so first of all, f of 3 is defined. That means at 3 there is a point, and it tells us that when x equals 3, my y value is 5. So this is true, and that answer would be 5. 
okay, we already found that the limit exists, the limit is equal to 6, and then my third condition would be that f of 3 is equal to the limit as x approaches 3. Well, 5 definitely does not equal 6, so statement 2 does not work. Okay, and then statement 3, f is differentiable. In order for a function to be differentiable, it has to be continuous, and we just found out from statement 2 that f is not continuous, so it cannot be differentiable. So statement one is the only one that is true. Okay, number 19. If f of x is equal to sine of 2x, then f prime of pi over 8 is equal to what? So this is asking us to find the derivative. Since I have parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and do a u substitution. So this is really the sine of u. And if I go to take the derivative of the sine of u, I'm going to get the cosine of u times the derivative of the u, and the derivative of 2x is 2. So if I rewrote this, this would be 2 cosine of 2x. And now I would like to find it when x equals pi over 8. So I'm now going to plug pi over 8 in for my x. And if I do that, I'll get 2 cosine of pi over 4. And I know that the cosine of pi over 4 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. And then we've got a 2 sitting out front. If I put a 1 underneath it, the 2's will cancel. So I know that f prime of pi over 8 is just equal to the square root of 2. Okay, number 20. For x is greater than or equal to 0, the horizontal line y equals 3 is an asymptote for the graph of the function f. Which of the following statements must be true? Okay, so we know that this is a horizontal asymptote, and pretty much the definition of a horizontal asymptote, to find a horizontal asymptote, we are just going to find the limit as x approaches infinity. So if the horizontal line y equals 3 is a horizontal asymptote, that means that the limit as x approaches infinity must equal 3. So if I look at those choices, C would be my choice. We really don't care about what's happening at 3 or anything like that. The only thing that we care about is what's happening as the x approaches infinity. So that would be really the first choice that I would have looked at anyway. 